So this wow. is a bit amazing. Yeah, that's wow. gorgeous. That's like a wood pile to end all wood piles. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Wow. Oh, how lovely that they've left it here. Whoa. I bet there's all kinds of insects living in here. Yeah. <laughs> it's gorgeous. Yeah. So I'm just having a look at um, this bit here. This, this is sort of um, really rotten. I mean, I, I, I dare say there will be creatures uh, who come and use, sort of get inside the bark and mm. there's vegetation growing on it already. But, but this is the, the more rotten it is, mm. the more suitable it is for, for burrowing insects. Um, so, so solitary wasps, there are one or two solitary bees that do burrow into dead wood um, in this country. But, but so much more, I, know, I, I guess, I don't know how long this has been here. It doesn't look as if it's been here a very long time. But I guess in time it'll get, it'll be covered in fungi when it gets all damp and really, really rotted. And then of course all the nutrients will sort of go back into the earth. So it's fantastic. I wonder if it was one of the old, I, I don't know anything about um, conifers, pines, yeah, but I guess. Blown down in the storm. So it was actually blown down. Wow. Yeah, wow. Incredible. Yeah, I've, I've got a few. <laughs> I've got a few old logs in <laughs> our garden in a corner sitting by a fence. They're left over from, from what we didn't burn in the wood, bin wood, wood burner, sorry, over winter. But this is <laughs> something else. Oh, look, so look, there's a hole here. That looks as if something. Oh, quite a few. So these, I'm guessing these would be wood boring beetles, but then, but there are bees small enough. So one of our smallest bees could actually, is, is small enough to, to make its nest, one of our smallest oh, wow. solitary bees to make its nest in that tiny little hole. Wow, that's incredible. It's bonkers, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> nice to sit on as well. <laughs> we can have our lunch on here. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, it's there as well. fascinating all of all of the beauty within something that you know some people would look at and just say oh it's an old bit of wood but there's so much beauty here and and life as well it's, it's almost like a piece of art do you remember did you ever when you were a child used to do put pieces of paper on bark and do oh, yes. bark with wax crayons yes yeah i used to love doing that it's fantastic. that and um and in in old churches we used to my mum always used to come armed with little wax sticks and pieces of paper and we used to do all of the, the nights um, on the floors and the plaques and things. Yeah. But barks, so much more beautiful. Wow. I feel like children have a very innate connection with nature, just naturally. And I feel like sometimes as we grow up, we can lose that a little bit. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think it's, it's really important to, to reconnect and have, have that curiosity for nature and everything have, around us. Have you always felt that? Were you, did you, as a child, did you have sort of a thing for nature? I think I was, I was very curious, sort of, I loved being outdoors. I loved sort of just, yeah, being around, being going to the woods was like my favourite thing to do. But yeah. I feel like sort of growing up, I lost that a little bit. But yeah. since then, it's sort of, especially in terms of mental health, reconnecting with nature has had massive benefits. And really? Yeah. So that's quite, quite a, a big thing for you, the what it does for your mental health or how it how it sort of mm -hmm. and it does improve mm -hmm. things doesn't it I know if I've if I'm going through and, and I'm fortunate not to um, have serious mental health problems but whenever I'm down or feeling um, blue or or even just everyday stressed I find that all I need to do but sometimes the big thing is to get yourself outside it's hard sometimes when you're in a bad place to get yourself outside but once you do um, Everything, it, it just falls away, doesn't it? Definitely, yeah. The, the benefits of ecotherapy are just amazing. And I know doctors are now prescribing, sort of going out into nature now, I heard. Really? Which is, yeah, which is, it's fantastic, really, I think. But, um, and I think it's, there's in, it's in Japan, I forget what it's, what the term is, it's shiwin oh, something. Oh, forest bathing. Forest bathing. Yeah. Shiwin, I want to say shiwin yoko, but it's not that. Yeah. Forest bathing. Yeah, um, I, that's, that is brilliant. I read a book on that and it is, yeah, it's beautiful sort of how I wish in this culture we were more sort of connected with the benefits of nature and how being out in trees and 
our sim like our symbiotic relationship with them is is so important for for our well-being and yeah well, it's sad that we've lost it i, I know i you say i mean i, I don't you are you in your 20s yeah in your 20s up in my 60s um and i lost all of this for decades literally decades mm -hmm. um and and it was in my oh, was it my late 40s I was walking across the Malvern Hills and, and I literally, I suddenly, I realised literally in an instant that I knew more about the French Revolution than I did about the trees yeah. around me. Yeah. Um, wow. And it was a shock wake up call and I, I think yeah. some, I was lucky, mm. you know, and, and since then I've been a nightmare to go for a walk with because <laughs> I look at everything. But I think some people spend a lifetime never having had that yeah. connection. You see children, yeah. small children um, already who are pulled away. Yeah from messy areas or told not to touch mm. things like slugs or or beetles and or to, to swat mm. insects so I think it's it's conditioning yeah. very often from an early age but Definitely. you're lucky to have uh, have rediscovered it yeah. um, early on yeah. very lucky <laughs>